Total Screen proudly presents their official podcast, On Screen, with your hosts, Tyson Gifford and William Rorick. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the On Screen Podcast, the official podcast of the Total Screen. My name is Tyson. My name is Will. And today we are doing episode 21 of the podcast, and we are going to be discussing the season four. Is it? No, wait, it's season three finale. It's the season three, yes. Of what we do in the shadows. We also have some news to go over. A few things that I've been kind of watching, I'm going to discuss as well. And we're going to cover a few things coming up on the horizon, including quite a few things from the Disney Plus Day, uh, which is coming up on November 12th. Disney Plus Day. <laughs> Let's get started with On Beat. On Beat. On Beat is our news segment. Our first news story up is that Peacock is struggling with low demand for originals. It kind of makes me sad and it's kind of obvious at the same time. Like there's a lot of good originals on Peacock. Is I there? think I haven't. Yeah, <laughs> I there are. It's like I haven't okay. been watching much Peacock recently because they've been shifting towards more like dramas, whereas before it was mostly comedies. And Honestly, I think they should have stuck I'm going to be comedies. honest. I'm going to be honest. Like it's, it's strange because like NBC's like strength, or at least to, to my knowledge, I could be get way off. As far as I can remember, is most known to me for its comedies. You had stuff like Cheers, and then like in the 90s, you had Friends and Seinfeld, Dirty Rock, The Office, uh, The Office, all these iconic Friends, yeah. comedies so premiered on NBC. And I think that was the network's strength. So for them to be like trying to move away from that strength for their streaming service is like, it's baffling to me. Yeah. Really. I mean, they, well, they've done well with some dramas too. I mean, ER was. Oh, yeah. They, uh, yeah. They've obviously had some successful dramas. Yeah, ER, I think the Law & Order series is NBC. Yeah, Law & Order has been very successful. I think the problem for me with what they're doing is, for instance, one of their dramas, originals, is Dr. Death, and that's the one that's doing the best of all of their shows. But they're not really, that's not like a great metric, because I don't think any of their shows are really doing all that well. And so it's like, it's doing the best out of what? A pile of shows that aren't doing well at all either. Yeah. I think the issue is that they're just not promoting it right. Like, I could name some Peacock shows, and... And I bet you know what they should most do? people have never even heard of them. Yeah. You know? yeah. Like you, not, not even you, in you know what they should do? Because like, here's the thing. Like they got these tiers. They got free tier and then they got premium tier. And they have this like scheme where like there's a lot of content that you can watch on the free tier. But there's some content that's locked to their premium tier. Yeah. They, like if you watch The Office, certain seasons are free. But you can't watch the entirety of The Office for free. Yeah. Which is like really weird. I think that's off-putting to people, to be honest. Yeah. Uh, I, I think that's a problem because like here's the thing so they have the free tier then they have the premium tier then they have the no advertisements add on to the premium tier which is like five dollars so it's five dollars for premium and another five dollars to not have ads it should just be two tiers it should just be free with ads or no or no ads premium and the free no with ads. ads just has everything but yes. it just has ads yeah and it just has advertisements if you want to get rid of the advertisements pay the five dollars get rid of the advertisements yeah there's a few things going against peacock i think the name is confusing for people because it, I mean, it should just be called like universal or nbc or something and it people should. would have a better idea what it is like i get like nbc's logo forever has been a peacock like i know where the name comes from but i don't think Think most people make that connection yeah they're just like wait why isn't this on netflix why is it on peacock and it's like well because the content is made by nbc universal and they also own peacock and they don't make that connection so whenever you tell someone like that they're like kind of confused for a second and like i said they don't really advertise their shows so like do you know for example you might know this because i think i might have talked about it but like there's a show on there called rutherford falls you know that's the uh, new show by 
Mike Schur. No. Did you know that? Uh, what, what's Rutherford Falls? The new show by Mike Schur, the guy who made The Good Place in Parks and Recreation. And you are more aware of TV than like the average TV watcher and have no clue. So it's like, that's the problem with Peacock is that nobody knows anything that's on there. Like nobody knows that it's there. Or like, how about Girls 5 Eva? If I said that to you, you'd probably cringe at the title and think it's bad. If I described the premise to you, you'd probably cringe and think it was bad. If I said, it's the new show from Tina Fey, yeah. you'd go, oh, Which, okay, yeah, you so like can, 30 Rock. You've, all, you've already told me about You've already told me that. Yeah, it's, but yeah. it's like that kind of shit. Like they, but but again, like this. you had to tell me that. Yeah, for me yeah. to like even like perk up about it because like I just saw the title and like dismissed it. Yeah, that that's the problem is that they just they're not doing good brand awareness and they're not doing good content awareness about what's on the service. And then they have all the confusion about what's on the free tier and what's not. There's a lot of people that don't even know there's a free tier at all. Like the whole reason they're yeah. doing a free yeah, tier it's, it's is so- like an entry strategy of like let's get some people to try it out yeah and then they'll go oh i'll get the more paid tier but nobody's even trying it out because they no. don't know that well, there is yeah. a free tier. <laughs> well, yeah i mean and it, it's confusing to have like a free tier and a paid tier with like content separated out yeah you know? so exactly. like, if somebody like signs up for this and they're looking for this there's a really possibility that if i'm scrolling through this and I say, oh, King of Queens. And then it takes me to the episodes and I'm watching King of Queens. And I'm having a great time. And then I go and see, okay, so what else is available? And I see, oh, Girls 5 Eva. That looks interesting. And I click on it and it tells me I need a subscription. I'm going to be like, what the hell? What is going on? There's what so is much this? confusion. I hope they find a way to turn it around because I do like the originals that they're making, you know, the comedy originals, at least. Like, I think we have enough drama. Like, the reason I subscribed to Peacock oh, is because I, was, I needed comedy. Here. Yeah, it's like I needed comedies. Like, I was like, I need, I need also, stuff also, to watch this and I have bro- enough dramas, I need some comedy. Also, this is broken. I've clicked on, like, multiple shows and links and half the time I get a something went wrong screen and I have to constantly refresh till the page shows up. Yeah, it's not great. It's not a great implementation. Like there's Holy just... shit, what the hell is this? I'm going through Mystery Science Tier 3000. It lists like season one, season three, season four, season five, season six, season nine, season ten. And there's only one episode in each of them. Oh, season nine has two episodes. This is like not even half of the content from that series. Yeah, there's yeah, this a is lot bad. of bad choices. Yeah. I wish it would be made better because Rithford Falls, Girls 5 Eva, We Are Lady Parts, AP Bio, which originally started Let's, as an NBC show. Uh, again, I click on, on Rithford Falls, I get something went wrong, this yeah. mess. It's like, come on. Yeah, they need to do something to fix this up. I hope they don't just destroy the service. And I mean, I guess the one positive would be if they do just get rid of the service, then they're going to end up pushing that content out to other streamers. So maybe like, you know, you know, you know what's funny? Bars will be on Netflix or something and people actually watch it there. You know, you know, you know what's funny about right. the whole thing too? NBC Universal Comcast, they still own a stake in Hulu. They're, in fact, the only other stakeholder in Hulu besides Disney now. And if they sold their stake to Disney, Disney would have 100% control of Hulu. Yeah. Uh, I mean, they already have control. Like, they, they, have they, controlling, um, they are they are not supporting Hulu anymore with their content. You know, putting new content up on that service. It's all going to Peacock. But recently they said they're not going to sell their stake to Disney. They're going to let their contract run out, which happens in several years. In several years, their stake, like the contract, their stake will run out naturally and then Disney will control it. So they're just going to sit there and wait for that to happen, which, you know, yeah. that's just spiteful to Disney. I, I thought that that's silly. It's, it's just, uh, it's dumb. There's so many dumb choices being made here. I mean, there's not much else to say about it. Let's move on. Some trailers have come out this week. I think the day after we record last week's podcast, the trailer dropped for Witcher Season 2. Yeah. Um, it looks good. Yeah, it looks good. It looks like The Witcher Season 2. I'm looking forward to it. It's a fun show. Yeah. Uh, I always like to say, like, I always see people, like, compare it to, like, Game of Thrones or something. And no, I'm like, it's no, this not. is more like Hercules and Xena. You know, <laughs> this is like a kind of cheesy, fun show. This isn't like a serious t- yeah, it's, you know, it's, show. Yeah, it's not like a super serious, like, it's got like some serious stuff it's got like themes but it's also like a more fun adventure series you know yeah it's not like at the same scale you know (laughs) uh but then that that, so that looks pretty good i mean it just looked like more witcher i'm I'm hoping that the production values have improved hopefully Hopefully no more penis armor they got they got more than uh, netflix money yeah the first season did really well for them so hopefully they have they improved it from there 
Book of Boba Fett trailer. What did you think of that? Oh, it looked good. Well, I mentioned Game of Thrones. There's kind of almost kind of a Game of Thrones feel going on with that. Game of like Thrones ish. Yeah, the, like the different crime families kind of thing. You know, you can tell that yeah, there's going to be a lot uh, of backstabbing and stuff going yeah, there's on. There's going to be a backstabbing intrigue. It's Boba Fett taking over the underworld. So that's going to be cool to see. It's kind of like I'm surprised for Disney Plus because it's that kind of show is normally like a much more adult orientated show. Yeah, I don't. Um, I don't think it's going to be. No, like, I don't think there's going to be a bunch of like tits and ass in it or something. No, obviously not. <laughs> Jesus, no. I just mean like that George, kind of show in general is George, usually George, more adult. George Lucas would be like spinning in his uh, in his home in his bed. I guess he's not dead yet. He would, he would be die just to spin in his grave. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> exactly normally that kind of show like a show that's about intrigue and crime and stuff like that is going to be more like adult it's still going to be a pg-13 show oh definitely uh, but i'm just curious like what yeah. that's going to mean for how intricate the plotting is going to be we're not going to expect something like breaking bad or something lovely no, like Jesus, intrigue and no. intelligence and you know the plotting and stuff you know this is still star wars it's, it's yeah. still a disney production on a disney like network but yeah, it looks good. It's different than kind of what I was expecting, even though the original teaser for at the end of the last season of The Mandalorian basically set up exactly what it was going to be. Yeah. I still wasn't really expecting you, you, it to be you, that when we... You, you thought this was like the, the new season of Mandalorian, and I was like, no, no, it's a separate show. I, I, that's <laughs> what I thought. I thought that they yeah. were just going to be doing a Mandalorian season that was going to focus mostly on Boba Fett, because I think the first two seasons of Mandalorian were both titled like The Book of This or The Book of That. Like, I was oh, those seasons. Uh, yeah, yeah. So saying The Book of Boba Fett, and the fact that he's Mandalorian. <laughs> That's true. I mean, yeah, your logic is sound, but yeah, <laughs> it's still its own show. <laughs> Let's move on to the last trailer we got this week, which is Morbius. This is the uh, uh, Venom verse, I guess. Like you could say, like Sony Spider Man verse, but he's not really in it yet. Yeah, so it's, it's the Venom. Well, so Sony calls it. Uh, I think Sony's universe of Marvel characters. <laughs> So dumb. Yeah, there's even like a Venom reference in this trailer. Yeah, was, like there's the one point like where Morbius like has this guy he's, like twisting his arm and he says, "I'm Venom," and uh, and then he's like, "Oh no, just kidding! It's Michael Morbius at your service." It looked it looked okay. It looked decent. It didn't look like anything amazing. I but... think the message I sent you after I watched it was that, like, yeah, it looks like about what I expect from the DCEU. Oh, I mean Venomverse. Uh, yeah, Venomverse. <laughs> well, the message I sent you was, like, it, it looks better than a movie about Morbius starring Jared Leto as any right being. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> like, At least he doesn't have damage written on his forehead. Right. It didn't look like total garbage, at least. It looks like it's about on par with the Venom films, which yeah. I'm okay with. Yeah, I mean, it looks pretty much like Venom to me. That's that's yeah. all I could think of. I'm like, yeah, yeah. This, feels, this feels consistent. Yeah, this feels consistent. Yeah, exactly. I do like the makeup for Morbius. It does look comic accurate. I think they did a good job with the Morbius makeup from what I could see in the trailer. Our last news stories are all about Nintendo. This isn't like a Nintendo Direct or like a bunch of new trailers came out for Nintendo games. This is just like a weird collection of stories that happen to be about Nintendo that happened throughout this week. So first off, Nintendo has closed offices in California and Toronto. These aren't game development studios no, these, or anything. These are just satellite offices. It's like PR doing, teams and stuff yeah, like that. We're just, yeah, doing business. They still have their main offices in Redmond and Vancouver. Did they have uh, one in so, New York too? Or Because they have the no. store in New York. I didn't know if they also they, had offices. There. No, they never had an office office in New York, as far as I know. Yeah, I think the main reason they probably had offices in California is because there's so many developers there and yeah. so much game press there. Yeah. It just was convenient for them. So this might be a result of the pandemic and just that they've gotten used to interacting with like media and stuff like that in a way where you're not directly meeting I mean, up them. Right. And then that just makes the whole idea of having offices and staff in that location kind of pointless. Yeah, exactly. So Nintendo had their office in Redmond, Washington since, you know, NOA yeah. was founded. And so the they're 80s, just going to, yeah. yeah, so they're just going to stick to that. Yeah. I mean, it makes sense. It's sad that a lot of jobs were lost. Hopefully some of them get, you know, job transfers over to continue working and maybe in like the California staff over at Redmond or the Toronto staff over in Vancouver. Right. So hopefully, yeah. Hopefully there's some transfer for that. That would be nice. But as far as like from the perspective of a gamer, this is probably going to have little to no effect on. No, it, it, no it's, just it's sad not going to have any effect. Lost. Yeah, it's, it's sad for the people who have to find new jobs. 
these things are always, it's always sad when people lose jobs and hopefully they they bounce back quick so this is something that will kind of affect nintendo gamers and that is that <laughs> due to chip shortages nintendo has cut switch production by 20 percent so it's going to be even harder to get a switch this yep. holiday season good luck everyone talks about it being hard to find like a ps5 <laughs> yeah. it's still hard to find a switch you know um i will it's i just hard recent, to find everything <laughs> i just recently looked at online listings for switches and they're all sold out yeah right now it's I anything, just, anything with a chip and it's hard to find now like gpus are hard to find new computer systems with new gpus are hard to find switches are hard to find playstation 5s are hard to find and this is going to continue on estimates now are saying into the very beginning of 2023 yeah so this is going to be a thing for at least another full year so yeah fun times yeah Uh, but what can you do really nothing but again, the, the same token, it, it, this also affects their competitors. This also affects Sony yeah, and Microsoft. it affects everybody. So, you know. It's just a shitty situation. The only people that are profiting off of this are scalpers. Yeah, pretty much. Our next story is that Bowser has pled guilty oh, to charges of piracy. Uh, Gary Bowser. Okay, uh, Gary Bowser, a team <laughs> executor. Yes. Uh, who makes, what do they do? They make uh, tools they, available, hardware and software, I believe? That Yeah, team executor specialized in hacking tools for various systems. They came under Nintendo's radar when they started advertising hacking tools for the Switch. And the thing about team executor is... They didn't just, like, release hacking tools and tell people, like, hey, you know, go hack your stuff. They sold these tools on their website for a profit. They had something, like, I think it was called, like, the X key for Switch or whatever, and you That's the thing that slides into the, where the Joy-Cons slide in, right? And that allows you to trick the system? As far as I know, yes. Here's the thing about that. You do not need their expensive gizmo to hack your Switch to do that. The whole thing with the Joy-Con rail is that... On the original Switch models, it's like a recovery thing. There's a way to enter recovery mode on the Switch, and there's no physical button to do it by design. It's supposed to be set up so, like, Nintendo service can, like, access it and put it into recovery mode at a service level. But people have figured out that you can access that recovery mode by shorting a pin on the Joy-Con rail and holding down, like, the power button at the same time, I believe. Mm -hmm. And you can do that with a paperclip if you know what you're doing. You did not need their X key or what the freak ever that they were selling for, like, who knows how much. Yeah. There are, like, files. If you have a 3D printer, you can 3D print a jig that will also, like, help you do it. You did not need to pay the money to hack your Switch. Also, like, they were very heavily advertising, like, the piracy aspect of it. They were, like, very heavily advertising the fact that you can buy their chips and it would let you uh, download a bunch of illegal games to your Switch. Yeah. Like, basically, that was, they were really stupid. Yes. That was, like, the thing. And as far as I know, like, people in that hacking and modding homebrew community didn't really like them because they made the community look bad, really. Here's the thing. It's a lot of people will say ROMs and stuff like that. They're legal, you know, as long as you own a a copy for the purpose of a backup and blah, 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 blah. The thing is that none of it is 100% legal. It's all gray area. It's all under challenge. Like, every time somebody says, oh, but you can do this legally, it's like, well, actually, there's like seven lawsuits going on that are challenging (laughs) right now. Well, here's the thing. (laughs) Here's the thing. There's more reasons to hack your system than to pirate games. Yeah, yeah, Uh, There's a lot of interesting homebrew. There's a lot of interesting things that you can do with a Switch that you hack. Like, people have installed Android on hacks switches and been able to do stuff like play android games or run stadia on the mm-hmm. on the switch which is really cool uses of that you yeah. can there are guides on the internet you can do it for free there's yourself. even challenges to that though for like example yeah. yeah fire tablets which is amazon's version of an android tablet they sell those for less than it costs for them to make them yeah but the reason that that's profitable for them is because it's loaded with their software and it's all in their interface so it pulls you into their ecosystem if you root that device and make it just a standard android device then they're taking a loss on that hardware oh yeah, yeah. on the benefit so there's still like gray area is what i'm saying so like when a company does something like this and they get caught and people go like oh fuck nintendo blah 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 it's like dude all of this is gray area there are legit reasons why this is like harmful to a company and there are also legit reasons why this shouldn't bother the company it's all gray area it's all disputable but here's the thing i think either people miss or people don't realize again the key thing is team executor was doing this for a profit yes that's well that's the that's what motivated nintendo to go after them in the first place you know the rom slates nintendo took down they were selling access to roms for a profit 
the last time my understanding was like they were offering like subscription to give you access to the ROMs. Like that's what caused Nintendo to go after them. It wasn't like a website you could just jump on and start mm-hmm. downloading ROMs. Like I think I was on that website before and a lot of the ROMs had like a little like lock icon next to them and they asked you to sign up for like some sort of subscription to get access. That's a red flag. That's what caused Nintendo to get on their butt. Like the fact that they were making money off mm-hmm. of this stuff is what, you know, like Nintendo is opposed to people putting ROMs on your net for free. Of course they are. But what really gets Nintendo's attention, what really gets their go is when you start making money off of their property. Yeah. And that is the thing that will most get them to go after you of yeah. anything. Because I know of ROM sites that have Nintendo ROMs on them that have existed forever that still exist that you don't hear about in the news because they're not charging people money to do it. And they're not making any money except for maybe like ad revenue for running ads on the site. But like, you know, Nintendo hasn't gone after those websites. I'm not naming those websites. I'm not going to get them in trouble. But, you know, like it's the ones who are like really blatant about, yeah, we're making money and doing this. Yeah. People think that Nintendo goes after companies because they hate their fans or something. And it's like there's yeah. two reasons Nintendo goes after companies. They go after companies because they're violating their products in a way that and, and profiting off of it, which isn't even necessarily Nintendo doing something something for Nintendo as it is that like let's say you're an indie developer and you have to pay a license to develop on Nintendo Switch and then there's these other people and they're just fucking doing it for free by violating terms of service for publishers <laughs> Nintendo is basically protecting those other companies too you know yeah because uh, it's bullshit for them the other thing is that Nintendo sues for precedence and by that I mean that like if somebody does something that could later be used as a defense against something else Nintendo has to sue or they lose that precedence to be able to protect themselves later and the idea of that means like if somebody does something and it doesn't really bother nintendo like let's say some company decides to like do a fan game of some franchise that's long forgotten that nobody cares about anymore nintendo will never do anything with again if nintendo doesn't sue them and then somebody else says hey well i'm gonna make a mario fan game and i'm gonna sell it for blah 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 and put it on the playstation or something and nintendo like sues that company the defense of that company can say hey wait a minute why didn't you sue this company then? and all of that matters in court precedence is like the most important thing in court like more than like anything else it's like has this been done before has this been protected before did you pursue this before that's like the most important thing in like u.s law so that's why they go after things like this it's to protect themselves against future instances of things like this so i mean in my opinion nobody should be upset about team executor yeah nintendo going after them overall i don't think uh, as far as like the hacking and mine community go, I don't think they were a positive force in that community to begin with. Mm-hmm. Um, and Nintendo is fully within the rights to go after them. You know, it's just if you want to hack your Switch, you know, like the guides are on the internet. It's still doable. You didn't need this company's tool to do it. Your ability to do what you want with your Switch has not been taken away from you yeah. uh, whatsoever. Also just, I think it's also important to acknowledge that don't be tricked into thinking all of this stuff is 100% legal and clear. It's all gray area. So if well, you step into it, like if you're going to make a website that hosts ROMs, you should be knowledgeable. Yeah, you, you should understand yeah, that. Yeah, you should understand the risks <laughs> of what you Exactly. You, sh- you should be aware of the risks of what you're doing. Yeah. And a, a lot of it to me strikes as me just, just bitching that they can't just do whatever they want because yeah. the mean old company is not letting them do what they want. Yeah. yeah. It just shows a lack of understanding about what yeah, I, I, the whole situation I, is. I, yeah. I'm sorry. I, I just don't have sympathy for that. Same here. Like, yeah. Our next story up is Animal Crossing has that update that's coming out on the 5th, including their DLC coming out on, on the 5th. But apparently it, they just broke the street date. <laughs> it dropped today. Yeah. I noticed like on Twitter, people were saying the update was live. I went to update my copy as soon as I saw the reports and sure enough, it started downloading the update. I haven't fired up the game yet to confirm. They just broke their own street date. <laughs> yeah, they, yeah, they did. Drift also, like, you okay. said that uh, the DLC isn't, most people are saying that that's not. I, I'm, I'm not clear on that at the moment. I saw some people saying like the DLC isn't available, but yeah, I'm not 100%. This is breaking news at the time that we're recording this. This is why yeah, this, know yeah, this just happened. So <laughs> yeah. yeah, so I don't know at the moment. And our last bit of Nintendo news is that there's going to be a Donkey Kong movie featuring Seth Rogen as Donkey Kong reprising his role from the Mario movie where he was recently announced as part of the cast. Well, did they announce it or was that like, yeah, that's still just a rumor? I don't think it was officially announced, but it's through like industry sites. Yeah. 
Yeah, so it's it's pretty sure. And you know what? Like, well, it's interesting to me that they did that before the Mario movie even like came out and had a chance to like be successful. It tells me that Nintendo and Illumination have like a lot of confidence in the Mario movie. Yeah. That they're ready to move forward with a Donkey Kong film to follow it up. They're making uh, the Mario extended universe. Yeah, the Mario extended universe. Then they're gonna like they're gonna introduce like Zelda and Metroid movies, and then they're gonna do like a Super Smash Brothers. It's gonna be like their <laughs> Avengers. Well, I mean, Donkey Kong and Mario have always been linked. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Donkey um, Kong was the first game that had Mario in it, was Donkey yeah, Kong. Yeah, right, exactly, exactly. It wasn't Mario yet, but, you know, it's still, it's all connected, yeah. And Donkey Kong shows up in all the games like Mario Kart and stuff, too, so he's definitely part of that. Yes. Frankie Kong being in the Mario movie was, I think, a bit more interesting. And, you know, uh, this year is the 40th anniversary of Donkey Kong. Yeah. And he premiered in 1981. That's yeah. when Donkey Kong released. That's also when I was born. So <laughs> that's Will telling everybody here to feel old. To feel old. Yeah. Damn it. <laughs> All right. And that's it for On Beat, our new segment. Next up, we have On Tap. What we've been watching. What's on tap? On tap is our section where we talk about what we've been playing and watching. So let's start off. There's an anime series that I've been watching called Platinum End. This is available on Crunchyroll. I think it's on some other services too, if you look around for it. This is from the creators of Death Note. And it has some of that vibe to it. It's basically about these people that are chosen in Japan. The main character is chosen because he was just about to kill himself, basically. Uh, And it's, it's all people that are kind of like at their wits end. Like they're basically at the point where they're like, okay, I give up. And then they were chosen as contestants basically to possibly be like this next god and what's interesting here is this isn't like a death game series except it okay. kind of is it starts sounding like a death game uh, it, 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 yeah. it is and it isn't because the official rules of this contest for them to choose to be it is that they basically just get these powers like depending on the rank of the angel that chooses to sponsor you basically you get different kinds of powers there's basically three specific types there's wings that allow you to like travel like insanely fast like you can just you know be wherever you want to be move very quickly fly there's a red arrow which kind of like charms somebody for like i think it's like 33 days or something they said i don't remember the exacts but you can only charm somebody once and then like you can't charm that same person again and you can only charm so many people at the same time but when you charm somebody they'll pretty much do whatever you want they're like infatuated with you they're like obsessed with you but you could also like have them kill themselves but only if they have guilt towards you so like if somebody did something very bad to you and then you use the charm thing on them and then you tell them to die they'll kill themselves well that's like, but, something but, like if they haven't done you and they're sociopaths you, and they don't care well it doesn't matter like yeah. when, under the effects of the charm arrow they'll kill themselves but they don't have guilt no like it's just like under the effects of it okay they but if you use it on somebody that's com- like completely innocent has never done anything wrong to you and you tell them to kill themselves like they won't okay. like it, that won't work on them so there's like a weird rule and effect there and then there's another type of arrow they have it's called like a white arrow and a white arrow will instantly kill somebody that it hits like there's no defense it hits you you're dead and regular arrow will do that too <laughs> no it's like you th- hit them this in the will heart. not wound you this <laughs> will kill you 100 this hits you in your ankle you'll die okay no, no matter what and the way this works like i said is there's different ranked angels so there's second class first class and special class and i think first class can only give like either red arrows or wings they can give one or the other so white arrows are arrows for people who are bad shots <laughs> no it just doesn't matter they're like <laughs> no. they yeah. You don't shoot them from a bow either. They just like come out of your hand. Yeah. No, no, I know. I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm, 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 I'm joshing you. <laughs> yeah. Then the, the first class ones can get like two of the abilities at the same time. And then special class just get all three. Oh, okay. The main character, his angel is special class. So he's got like all three. Of course. Yeah. Well, and then. <laughs> of course he's the main character. <laughs> <laughs> but then there's like, he's not like, you think like from the creators of Death Notes, you're like, oh, he's turning this into Death Note. It's like, no, he's actually fairly innocent. Like he doesn't want to hurt people. He kind of just wants to be by himself and do his own thing. And he wants to kind of pursue happiness. Like he doesn't want to like, you know, shoot a bunch of girls with the red arrow and take advantage of them. Or do, he just wants to kind of like use it to seek out his own happiness without hurting other people or anything. That's right. kind of his perspective. Right. Like I was like thinking like, man, that first power is fucking awesome. And then you start to, I was like, wow, that's lame. I was like, really? And I don't want to do that. <laughs> 
I want to like fly around and shit. That sounds yeah. awesome. Well, but there's other things to it. So for example, you know, the main character is like really poor. And so he's living with his like uncle and his aunt who treat him horribly. And so he, when he goes away from them, he uses the red arrow on like a hotel clerk or something and basically has a place to stay. Right. The person gives him, so you can, you don't have to use it like for sex or something, you know, you can use right. it well, I to, to manipulate, to get things to help you get by and stuff. You could shoot somebody selling food and get free food. So you can do things like that just to kind of get by if you're poor. And like I said, all these people are people that were like on the edge of giving up. So you're going to have a lot of people that are poor and really desperate situations. Well, yeah. But then there is one, at least one character who wants to turn this into a death game because the idea is basically they're going to let these people go free using these abilities and then the angels are going to gather together after a certain amount of time and decide which of them deserves to become the new god basically. well just, just shoot that guy with a white arrow <laughs> I'm with it like well but I mean if he's able think about this this is when the creator is a death note right. he's not like yeah. showing his identity oh, okay he's being tricky he's not just like out there acting like god already you know? he's, <laughs> he's being tricky you know but they know he's doing shit but going after him is risky he also has all three abilities oh um, well, well that's that's not fair <laughs> I, th I thought like it was like three people and like like there are three tiers no there's three tiers but there's not only three people there's like 11 people i think oh there's 11 people okay. yeah and so there's there's only like a few special class which are the ones that get all three i think there's like three or four special class and then the rest are either first class or second class i think there's just 11 no there's 12 and of course like these angels and their wisdom they made the psycho the psychopath a special class well the one did <laughs> yeah yeah the all one the did. angels got to pick their own people and they're and yeah. the angels are all different too like you know right. some of them are more like tricky and some of them are more like honest like the person who picks the main character is like they say that the special class people are all like an absolutes of a certain quality and the absolute of this person's quality is basically like purity uh -huh. like, so this is somebody who's not evil or anything at all it's very pure angel and so she really just wants this guy to be happy because he has nothing and oh, so that's wow. why she picked him whereas the person who picked the you know the guy who's trying to turn it into a death game isn't so altruistic <laughs> uh so you have the different angels have their own kind of their, their, own, their own motives and yeah everything else so it's just it's a really interesting series it's got very clear sets of rules and you can follow and and follow the strategies mm -hmm. of the different characters and what they're doing and ones that are just trying to protect themselves ones that are going after each other things like that the guy that's trying to kill all the people that's trying to turn a death game is because if everybody but him is dead before the time limits up then he becomes the god because there's nobody else to choose oh i see right so that's why he's turning that's it into Logic, I guess. Yeah, he's he's just eliminating the competition. But yeah, it's a good show. Like I said, from the creator of Death Note. So if you like that, you know, everybody knows what Death Note is. <laughs> if you like that, you like the kind of strategy and, and thought that was put into like Death Note and stuff, that's very much in play here on Platinum End. So check nice. that out. And the other thing I've been watching is also animated. This is an older show that's been around. I just never got around to watching it. And that's F is for Family. It's an animated series on Netflix. It's from Bill Burr, the comedian. And it's like loosely based on his own upbringing when he was a kid in like the 70s so it takes place in the 70s and it mostly follows like his father who's like i said it's loosely based his father was like a dentist the comedian's father was like a dentist and in this show he's like this guy who wanted to be a pilot but instead worked for like a airline or something but yeah it's just it's an adult cartoon not meaning like you know porn meaning like you know family guy that kind of thing south park you know something along those lines but you know because it's on netflix they can get away with a lot more than you could on like network tv it's just a funny show a lot of it's just basically about the way the 70s were so different from now the way like people just didn't care about anything like oh the kids are just out you know like they're playing with their friends and one of them is like got bit by a you know a rabid squirrel or something and the parents are just have no involvement in the kids lives and you know it's like it plays on that like that kind of idea of like how dangerous it was for kids and that time and what the differences in the eras were like right yeah so i'm on like season two of that i've been kind of slowly watching it and yeah uh it's been out for a while i think there's three seasons out and i think a fourth season's coming soon but yeah i'm enjoying it it's good nice yeah. and uh we're gonna end this off this segment with uh some chucky information so you've been watching I heard you were watching it, I think, on YouTube, right? Like, because they were releasing Well, they the put the two. first two episodes up on YouTube, then they mm -hmm. stopped. And so now you can find episodes streaming on either Sci-Fi's official site or USA Network's official site. It's, I think uh, it's not on Peacock, which is... Weird. No, it's not on Peacock Which is so stupid all. because it's for fucking Peacock. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, again, we were talking about NBC Universal, you know, Peacock not 
gaining traction. And it's like, well, here's a show that they own that they're pushing that seems mm-hmm. to be fairly popular yeah. and can't find it on their streaming service. They w- even went as far as to air it on both Sci-Fi and USA. So they were yes. airing it on two networks simultaneously. So yes. they were going that far to promote the show. And yet they're not even putting it on their own streamer, which is weird because like you said, it's on USA's official website or like Sci-Fi's official website, but neither of those are like really common streamers. So I know no. like, pe- I know there's already people I've talked to that are like, they thought it was just all going to be up on YouTube because because they put the first episode up, but USA has done that kind of stuff before. Also, also in, in order to watch these episodes on, you need like cable authentication, right? You need a cable, yeah. You need a cable subscription. You need to authenticate it. Yeah, and so that's people are confused about where to watch this, and they thought because it was weird that they put up not just one but the first two episodes um, yeah. on YouTube, and people thought like, oh, they're just going to do this as a distribution strategy, and then they get to week three and they're like, well, where uh, the fuck yeah. do I watch this? Yeah, and they don't YouTube. have a cable subscription; they just have streaming services, and they're like, well, how do I watch this now? Yeah, exactly. And I felt like if you could tell people, it would have been a good strategy for NBC Universal and Peacock if like they were like, first two episodes on YouTube get you hooked, then go to Peacock to watch the rest. But exactly. no, nope. <laughs> Again, it's it's an our baffling decision. Like, it's not helping their streaming service at all. Yeah. It's weird. so weird. So how are you watching it now? I am watching it on Sci-Fi's website. Okay, you have cable authentication through... Do you have Spectrum. cable now or do you... Have, okay, you have Spectrum cable. Yeah, I have Spectrum. Okay, because you used to have that hulu live or whatever. yeah you can actually watch it on hulu with hulu live tv as well because you could take ha- it with their digital dvr right or yeah it, well yeah if you look it up on hulu it says available with hulu plus live tv mm-hmm. but you have to have the live tv component of hulu you can't watch it on basic hulu yeah which isn't like a regular streaming service by the way this isn't you know a ten dollar a month thing this is like no what, it's like it, or... yeah it's a sixty dollar a month yeah yeah premium internet cable service which i mean it should be available on probably all of those right so it would be on hulu live plus tv it would be on yeah, youtube on, tv uh, it, and uh sling and i don't uh, believe it's on youtube tv it might be well yeah. i have sci-fi and usa so i just should just be able to tape it yeah that's true on either of those but yeah it's uh yeah baffling how do you feel about the show? Because I think you talked about the show before when you had just seen like the first episode or maybe it was just you were talking about getting ready to watch the show. I don't remember. I don't remember. It's great. It's a really fun show. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's got great. Yeah, I was telling you about that. It's got great characters. The pacing is really snappy. How are uh, they How are they managing as a horror series? Because some series have trouble tackling horror as a series. You know what I mean? Oh, oh, fantastic. By keeping the tension going while being an episodic thing. Yeah, no, it's great. They, they do a great job of keeping the tension going in this. Every episode is full of tension of, you know, what what's going to happen next. Especially like, it's not also like only what Chucky is going to do. There's also like the interpersonal drama with the characters. Mm-hmm. And it's funny, too, because in the show we have, like, Chucky, he's not only, like, killing people, but Chucky is also, like, manipulating people and, like, ratcheting up the drama between characters. He's Hannibaling people. (laughs) Yeah, he's Hannibaling people. It's funny because, like, I didn't know this before, but Don Mancini, the creator of Chucky and the showrunner for the show, he was also, like, an EP on Hannibal. Oh. <laughs> yeah. And that makes was, sense. I know I've seen, like, uh, Brian Ford mentioning the Chucky show a few times on, like, Twitter and Instagram and stuff, so that makes more sense now, too. <laughs> yeah, he was an EP on Hannibal, and it's funny because now, like, it makes sense because, like, if you watch the last Chucky film they did, uh, Cult of Chucky, there's a scene where, like, because Cult of Chucky, like, established now that Chucky Chucky can actually like transfer his soul to like multiple vessels at the same time. Mm. So there's a scene where like Chucky possesses two other Chucky dolls and they're all together. And then like one of the Chucky dolls is like, Andy's here. We should be careful. It behooves us to not underestimate him. And then like Chucky says, behoove, you sound like Hannibal Lecter. And then, <laughs> and, then and then Chucky says, I can't believe they canceled that show. <laughs> <laughs> That alone makes me want to watch this now. So I got yeah. to get started watching this. Yeah, you can start Animal watching. references alone are worth it for me. <laughs> yeah, it, it's, it's, a, it's a real fun show. So far, it's like Chucky gets a kill in every episode so far. So that's really fun. Yeah, it makes a lot more sense now when you talk about him being able to possess multiple vessels at the same time. Because yeah. they were showing him like in the trailers. I know they showed him with like the new, like the main character of the series or who I presumed was like some boy. But then they also showed him like he was in bed with some like little girl and, and he was like, I'm going to go kill your sister. Want to come? And she was like, no, or something like that, you know? Yeah, yeah. So it's like, okay, that makes more sense now if he's like in multiple things at the same time. Yeah. Well, when you watch it, like that stuff will make sense. Uh, (laughs) 
No, that sounds interesting. I might want to check that out now, just based on my schedule, I guess. <laughs> but that's it for On Tap. Our next section is On the Horizon. On the Horizon is where we talk about stuff that's coming up in the next week or so. Basically, we're covering stuff coming up between now and November 12th, so next Friday. This podcast should probably be up by Friday, so then it covers like another week. We already mentioned last week that Eternals was coming to theaters on Friday, November 5th, probably around the time, like I said, this episode will be out. So yeah, we're just mentioning that again because that's a big deal. That's a Marvel movie. Eternals is, like I do have to note, Eternals is like the first Marvel movie to get a rotten rating. It's currently at like 57% rotten in on Rotten Tomatoes. So There's not, so not many doing... aspects of that, though, that are questionable it, it, based it's on like, the way people well are going after critics. certain movies. So, yeah, I don't know. I think we're going to have a better idea of what that actually means when we actually watch it. <laughs> yeah, and we'll have to see it. It sounds like it's not a straightforward Marvel film. So it seems like it's polarizing the critics. Yeah, we'll have to see what that actually means. Because a lot of times you'll get like really bad critical response and you'll find out it's actually kind of maybe politically motivated or maybe motivated by like some other thing. Like they're just don't like Marvel movies and they want to like, you know, they've gotten sick of it at this point or something. I don't know, because like (laughs) if it was like something like we're just tired of Marvel movies, Shang-Chi would have fell victim to that already. But I've seen that coming up on like Twitter discussions about Eternals between critics and stuff where critics have literally literally like gone on talking about how Marvel movies are trash and how they're just about like when's the next quit gonna be and that kind of stuff and like going after Marvel movies in a way that I haven't seen them go a lot after of the before. well yeah but a lot of the log lines I'm seeing on Rotten Tomatoes from the critics are like basically complaining that this isn't a traditional Marvel movie so I don't yeah know. it'll be interesting to see what that means you know yeah there are good movies that have gotten very bad scores, at least initially. Uh, oh, Fight yeah. Club scored pretty badly initially, you know, and that's like yeah. a classic. And the, in that's opinion. insane to, to think <laughs> that people hated that movie. Yeah, it's such an influential and powerful film, you <laughs> yeah. know, that like yeah. the Star Wars had issues, I think, when it first came out. It got some bad ratings. And reviews. Yeah, I can see I think though, Jaws did. You it's know, a, it's like Star Wars is a bit corny, to be honest. Yeah, but yeah. But think of it, it's cultural influence, you know, yeah. it's like, so sometimes you see things like this and it looks like, ooh, maybe that's not good. And sometimes it's like, I don't I don't know i don't know what this means yet yeah we'll have to see the movie see how it turns out yeah that's this friday november 5th on saturday november 6th arcane league of legends comes to netflix will and i talked about this a little bit before the podcast neither of us have played league of legends neither of us are particularly fans of free-to-play games in fact i will just say for myself without speaking for you i fucking hate free-to-play games and the very idea of their existence offends me uh, but, yeah same same but this arcane show looks really good it does like, it, it looks just looks really well made you I, know? I'm, and I'm, yeah looks great you know I'm, I'm fine with watching i could get into lore if the lore is interesting and stuff so if yeah. this is an interesting show i'll watch it doesn't mean i'm gonna go play league of legends but i can watch yeah. this i'm definitely not gonna play league of legends but i might watch this yeah i might actually get into this probably going to check it out like almost right away uh, when it comes out i'll check uh, out at least an episode dexter's coming out this month uh that's Dexter, gonna be interesting yeah on it's Sunday, from the November original 7th. it's from the original showrunner he left after season four so if you're looking for that yeah cutoff point um, you're looking for the cutoff point so you know hopefully it's a return to the Dexter that people loved and not the Dexter that people ended up hating. I'm going to take a wait and see because I don't have Showtime. Yeah, yeah I don't so, have Showtime either. So yeah. I'll take I'm a wait and see if, if everybody seems pretty positive about it, then I'll probably just buy the season or something that's cheaper than subscribing same. for a few months. True. Yeah, same. Next up, we have The Shrink Next Door, which is coming to Apple TV Plus on Friday, November 12th. That has a, it's a new Apple TV Plus series featuring Paul Rudd and Will Ferrell, where it's about, I think it's an inappropriate relationship between a psychiatrist and his patient. Yeah, it's, it's the story. It's based on a true story. Um, kind of, like, the description reminds me of that. What about Bob with uh, Bill Murray, I think? Uh, it? Yeah, it's it's based on a true story from what I know about, from what I understand, I read up a little bit about, it's about like a therapist who this guy goes to and the therapist like starts manipulating him and basically takes over his life to the mm-hmm. point where this therapist is now living in this guy's like expensive house, having parties with celebrities and introducing himself as the homeowner to to guests and stuff. So you and, have Apple TV Plus for a little while. Yeah, like, is I have you're it, interested in? Yeah, I'll probably check it out. It sounds interesting. It's got a good cast. I like Paul Rudd. I like Will Ferrell. Yeah, it's funny because like the uh, journalist who wrote the original article about this, he said the way he like introduced it was like he got invited to a party at the house through the home's gardener, right? And then he met the homeowner. And then he, he said later he turned out 
that the guy who he thought was the homeowner was the shrink, and the guy who he thought was the gardener was the real homeowner, the shrink's patient. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, it's insane. Yeah. If you check that out, make sure to let me know like if that's any good or not. Okay. And then we have Shin Megami Tensei 5 comes out on Friday, November 12th as well. That's a Switch exclusive. I'm looking forward to this. We talked to last week about Metroid Dread and we both kind of said, I think that right now that that's kind of our game of the year for both of us. This is the one that I think could be a contender. For, for JRPG fans. Yeah. Yeah. As a JRPG fan, this is, this could be a contender. It's, it's, it's not going to be on the game awards or anything. I was like, no, yeah. no, but I don't consider that what dictates what's game of the year anyways. No, I know. I think I'm people only watch the game awards to see trailers anyways. Yeah, they do. So, but Shimigami Tensei 5 is, it's a big Switch exclusive and it's coming yeah. out this uh, next Friday on November 12th. I'm looking forward to it. I don't know if it's going to beat Dread out for my game of the year, but you'll have to let me know. <laughs> but I'm still excited for it. And then the last thing to talk about about also on Friday, November 12th is Disney Plus Day. So this isn't just one thing. This is a lot of things, including frustratingly, things that should have come out earlier on the service, but were held back. Namely, uh, Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings. Oh yeah, Disney Plus. Yeah. Disney Plus Day is just this thing they're doing to celebrate Disney Plus. Uh, they're doing The World According to Jeff Goldblum, which I, you know, I like Jeff Goldblum. I'm probably not going to watch that. That's pretty good. The first season was pretty good. I'm definitely watching Shang-Chi, obviously. Mm-hmm. Jungle really... Cruise is the other big movie that's coming out. Yeah, that day. Jungle Cruise is the other with The Rock. And I don't know. I, that movie's probably probably a fun watch. Yeah, it's, it's, probably... a, it's a fun watch. Don't expect anything clever, but you know. No, it's a, yeah, it doesn't look like anything it's, it's clever. Maybe like if you're in the mood for something along the lines blunt. of like a national treasure uh and you know like that nicholas cage movie if you're in the mood for something along those lines like jungle cruise and i'm sorry i have to like do a little little rant about home sweet home alone because it's such (laughs) a blatant (laughs) ripoff of the original movie and that's what it is there's straight lines that are exactly the same yeah there's straight lines are like lifted from the it's the same plot they don't even try to do anything original with it or like have like a twist to it or anything it's literally played straight as this is home alone like beat for beat and i'm just like why why does this exist because it's modern so it can be woke alone also like how are they doing a beat for beat home alone in a world that has cell phones does the mother not think to call him does he not have his own phone and, uh, reception's and down that day they have that giant freaking mansion and they don't buy their kids cell phones i don't believe that <laughs> like I, <laughs> Reception, reception's bad yeah reception's bad i guess it was the snowstorm it doesn't even look like there's bad weather the, in that trailer. the wet bandits splash some water on some 5g towers <laughs> also 5g towers yeah Maybe they're 5G conspiracy theorists in this too. Yeah. So they have yeah, like they that like, motive. They, they thought they were saving people from coronavirus and then they felt <laughs> that they weren't being like honored for doing it. So they decided to rob homes. <laughs> It's just so unnecessary. It's just, you know, if you're going to do a new Home Alone, at least find, like, a new spin on it. Like, Mm -hmm. I don't know anybody who was asking, let's have, like, a beat-for-beat remake of Home Alone, but worse. I mean, they have done more than the first two Home Alone movies have come out, you know, uh, that were, by all accounts, pretty horrible. Yeah, I think there were, like, at least two or three more that came out after two. But at least Um, they were trying to be different. Yeah. this Like, I can give them that. Yeah. This, I mean, we could say this looks like a big rip-off of the first one which it does but we don't know how much of that's going to hold true in the actual movie and well, it could end up being that they're pu- pushing for a return to form and that those things that look like direct ripoffs are more there as like homage to the original yeah you know? well, it, 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 still, it still looks terrible i'm not it doesn't that. look great yeah yeah it, it does it still looks unnecessary okay yeah. well that's the end of that well, one last thing coming to disney plus that could fly under a lot of people's radars but is actually kind of a big thing and that's a marvel studios 2021 disney plus day mm. special i don't know Oh, wow. This looks like it's going to be nothing, but apparently the rumors going around about this is that th- we're going to get trailers and announcements for a lot of upcoming Marvel stuff that we haven't seen. Yet. Okay. Well, if we get that, that'll be cool. That's what it seems to be about. This is like, if it's of, just like, this is the equivalent of like a D, what, what do they call that event? They did D20. D23. D23. This is like their equivalent of like a D23, but as like a streaming thing, like a Nintendo Direct D23, basically. So yeah, okay. that's, uh, oh. that's the last thing for On the Horizon. Our final segment, full spoilers. Oh, 
Full Spoilers, a segment where we talk about the shows in full spoilers. And we're going to be talking about what we do in the shadows, season three, episode 10, The Portrait, which is the season three finale. So what did you think of this episode? Oh, I thought it was excellent. I it's thought interesting, it was great. all the cameos they, they kind of kept around here. They brought back the uh, sire Donald and the baron and Donald Logue stuck around. Yeah, I love that. I love that he was like painting the portrait. I love the beginning of the, like the opening, like mm-hmm. all the ways like they removed Colin Robinson from the opening. Yeah, uh, yeah they like crossed out his eyes or just straight up he was gone out of a portrait or something and they, they open it like the thing is like uh vampires when like one of them dies they just like try to forget that they ever existed they just make and, a new portrait without them yeah <laughs> yeah so, yeah it. yeah yeah so they just redo like any portraits they had with that vampire in there they just redo it without them and i that's like what that they're doing at the beginning lore. i think yeah. that's interesting and so that's what they're doing when the episode opens is they're getting like donna logue is like painting a new portrait for them because mm-hmm. he took a painting <laughs> <laughs> I, I love it too because like he goes through like all the portraits he did and he shows like oh here's the portrait I did of the cast of Grounded for Life <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's all these portraits from these different there's, shows there's, he was on and yeah stuff. there's so many like, gags and like callbacks and stuff. he also keeps telling Hollywood really? stories and boring everybody <laughs> yes, yeah <laughs> he keeps going on about some story about you know meeting some actor on the set of something and he can just see like Nandor like just like rolling his eyes <laughs> meanwhile Guillermo was trying to get everybody to like uh, we should say a few things about Colin Robinson and Andor and Nadja and stuff are like no <laughs> you know like, <laughs> like they don't want to I love uh, the whole part where they're discussing whether Guillermo should even be in the portrait and yes. then Nandor comes to his defense but then you find out he's actually talking about the dog yes <laughs> Guillermo's like thank you Nandor and he's like I wasn't talking about you I was talking about the dog that was funny. Uh, we finally got a fight between Guillermo and Nandor. It was like a, yes. a little slightly tense moment, ten, as tense as the show gets. As tense as the show gets. Like, Guillermo has been a lot more assertive this season. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, you know, that was bound to boil over into some conflict. So it came so into some kind of mutual respect, which was nice. Yes, which is very nice. So basically what happens is everybody, like, decides that they don't want to stay there anymore. They all want to go their separate ways. Except for, like, Laszlo, really, but, like, Nandor is just sick of being in that house so he decides he's going to take a trip and like see the world and stuff it's part of that but he also described it as like you know when Laszlo and and Nadja are going to leave and he's like I'm not going to be the loser who's still around yeah 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 he's like I'm not going to be a loser who's still staying here Nadja apparently got an offer from the Vampiric Council yeah we got a cameo from Viago uh, played by Taika Waititi again yes another videotape it's funny where he was like he's like you're not taping this over RuPaul are you I haven't watched that yet and then when this video ends it cuts like (laughs) RuPaul yeah Yeah, he offers Nadja like a position at the Worldwide Vampiric Council apparently in London uh, yeah in London and so she's trying to go there but Laszlo doesn't want to go back to London he's sworn Uh, never to return to London because he got kicked out of this club that his family had all been part of and they didn't even care that he was a vampire it it sounds selfish at first like it sounds petty Mm -hmm. like it sounds like very Laszlo but he actually like ends up having a very good reason for doing it yeah it's because of Nadja being a commoner yeah it's because Nadja was a commoner like a peasant is the reason he got kicked out like you say, it wasn't even because I got, was a vampire. They didn't give a frick about that. <laughs> you know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's because of Nadja. And Laszlo was a character. Like, I love what they did with Laszlo this season, where, like, they really solidified him as, like, he's somebody like who who pretends to not care who pretends to not have like any skin in the game but like that's all a front mm-hmm. like he spends the entire episode saying like he doesn't care about Colin Robinson or anything but you know like and especially when you get to the end of the episode you know that's bullshit yeah uh, you know and it's the same thing with Nadja you know like he cared enough about Nadja to get kicked out of that club and to never want to return to London because of that mm-hmm. and that was all for her sake so Laszlo, like more than like anybody else, cares, you know? Yeah, it's interesting because you, you do see that point for like all of the characters, like the, what they actually care about. That's yeah. one thing that I do like about the season that they really brought out. Like we always knew, for example, that Nandor was kind of a big teddy bear of a, of a character. He was always like that. But yeah. in this season, they really play into like his loneliness. Yes. And then like you see the way he kind of treats Guillermo so badly, but then you also kind of see moments throughout where you want, where you see that he actually does care about Guillermo. And so these elements kind of come out in little subtle 
little lays and stuff throughout the season, which is nice. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. That's very, that's very nice for Laszlo and, and Nandor at least. <laughs> for Laszlo, and not, not really for Nadja or Colin Robinson. So, so things come to a head where, like, yeah, after that fight, you know, like Nandor says, Guillermo can join him on his trip, and that he will make Guillermo a vampire. And he says, like, his word is his bond. You know. Yeah, like, he says, like, at the end of the trip, he'll make him a vampire, like on the same on his home soil, basically. Yeah, on his home soil. Mm-hmm. And so Guillermo's getting ready to go. He's helping Laszlo and Nadja out to get onto the ship first before he yeah. joins Nandor. Nandor's like, why? And he's like, it's just my way to say goodbye to them. Yeah. So he's helping them out. And Laszlo ends up putting Guillermo into the coffin that he was supposed to go into. It's funny because they telegraphed that, but I didn't see it coming. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't see it coming either. Lot, like, Guillermo's like, why do you have all these snacks? Like, why do you have bags yeah. of Cheetos and stuff and all yeah. this water? And <laughs> yeah. He's like, oh, you know, he, you know, he's making excuses. And then he, yeah, he, he throws Guillermo, he seals Guillermo up in it. And you find out the reason and he tells Guillermo to take care of Nadja for him. Mm-hmm. And then you find out the reason he does this is because before he left, he actually went down to the basement to say goodbye to Colin Robinson's corpse. And that's when he made a shocking discovery. Yeah. He discovered something had burst out of the stomach of Colin Robinson's corpse. What we do and- in the shadows is taking a page out of the book of The Mandalorian. Yeah, The Mandalorian. Laszlo discovers a baby Colin Robinson. Yeah. You know how they had all those baby Yodas? Like they need yeah. a baby Colin Robinson doll. <laughs> yeah, they did. Yeah, they need a baby Colin Robinson doll. With so like Laz- glowing eyes and everything. That's so great. Laszlo is staying behind to uh, take care of baby Colin Robinson. Yeah. And it's funny because he doesn't just look like some random baby. Like he no, looks he, like a literally Robinson. a baby with adult Colin Robinson's head, you know, which yeah. is horrifying. But yeah. yeah. And making like inhuman screams and stuff. Yeah. So now we really know what happens to energy vampires when they turn 100. Yeah, that's interesting. That's the end of what we do in the Shadow Season 3. I think there's a Season 4 coming, I'm pretty sure. And uh, it'll be interesting to see where they go because nobody's together. Everybody's separated. Even characters that you wouldn't think would be separated, like Nadja and Laszlo, are separated. So it'll be interesting to see like where they pick up. If they pick up and after obviously, a, a stretch of time has already passed. or And obviously this is going to put another rift into Guillermo and Nandor's relationship. I yeah, that Nan- was kind of sad seeing Nandor yeah, getting kinda... upset, like waiting at the train for Guillermo. Yeah, waiting at the train for Guillermo. So I, I don't think that offer of vampirism to Guillermo is valid anymore. Yeah. Uh, Nandor's upset. Yeah. I like the way they played that, though. They kind of played this, like, <laughs> unspoken kind of gay romance between Guillermo and, and yes. Nandor this season. They had it referenced with, like, the girl at the gym, the lesbian at the gym that he was attracted to, making comments when Guillermo was talking to him in with that using that cloak um, yeah. about, like, how much they, they clearly, like, well, love each other. Well, it's, and well, then, it's definitely a thing on yeah. Guillermo's end. You know, I definitely do think Guillermo... Oh, yeah, there's a clear subtext. In yeah, I think that's like, you know, every time, like, Nandor threatened to leave, you know, it caused a panic in Guillermo. Guillermo's whole thing about wanting to be a vampire, I think, is wanting to be with Nandor forever at this mm. point. I think maybe initially when he met the vampires or he got into it, it was a fascination with vampires, but I think now it's all about being with Nandor forever. Well, even in the first episode of the series, when it talked about his wanting to be a vampire, he was referencing Antonio Banderas in Interview with the Vampire. Yeah. So it was always kind of coming from this, like, romantic place you know yeah and i think to him like nandor is his antonio banderas from <laughs> interview with oh uh, yeah yeah that's a good that's a good connection yeah so it, it's like they're both like big tall you know strong characters and i think that plays into it for him so yeah that's a that's what we do in the shadows season three i think when, when we were talking about the season before i was kind of coming across mostly negative it's not that i didn't like the show it's just i was noticing a lot of things that felt off and a little out of character some of that kind of course corrected by the end of the season I think like, like I'll, Colin I, Robinson like also I think a lot of it was and, contextualized by yeah Anderson. yeah I mean there's still it's not all it's like there's still yeah. some things that I'm kind of like eh, about you know but like a lot of the stuff that I kind of initially had issues with like you said it was contextualized and now it makes a little bit more sense it's like okay I kind of get that a little bit more now or or even if it's not necessarily in there I could I could just even read into it to think it's that way you know that makes it okay for me but yeah I liked it and I'm still looking forward to another season so I, I'm 
I'm definitely I'm, there's no season. I'm, I don't I'm know for sure board. if there is one, but I'm pretty that's... sure it's been renewed. Yeah, I'm yeah. Positive. yeah, I'm positive it's been renewed. I think we talked about it at one point. Yeah, we talked about it. Yeah. So that's it for the show. Next week we're going to be talking about season two of Lock and Key. I have season three written down here on my stage. But... <laughs> no, we're not that far in the future. No, we're going to be talking about season. I'm, two I'm way Lock behind if we're talking about season three. <laughs> Holy cow! That's uh... a ten episode follow up season to the first one. We're going to be talking about that next week. That's going to be our full spoilers topic. And then, you know, whatever news or other stuff comes up, we'll, we'll talk about that as well. Thank you, everybody, for listening. You can follow me on Twitter. I'm at Tyson Gifford. You can follow Will. He is at Voxel Hero. Leave comments, good, bad, or indifferent in any way you can contact us, whether that be on YouTube, where you can watch this podcast, watch because it just has the podcast start on the audio, or on SoundCloud, where, where we host our podcast, or, you know, through Twitter. Like I said, at Tyson Gifford, at Voxel Hero. Uh, you can contact us at either of those. And uh, thank you, everybody, for listening. Good night. Good night. Thank you for listening to the On Screen Podcast, the official podcast of The Total Screen. Visit our website at thetotalscreen.com. This podcast can be found on any major podcast client, including Pocket Cast and Apple Podcast. The entire backlog of this podcast and other content can be found on our YouTube channel.